Welcome, welcome to you all. Welcome to you for this uh, specific final conference dedicated to the European project USAC, UNESCO sites across the channel. This particular final conference will help us to exchange and to provide you with our feedback. It would be an opportunity to introduce all the successful outputs uh, derived from this project and this at the benefit of all participants here today. I suggest we now start with a few slides. And these slides will be an opportunity for the different stakeholders to present what they've done. It will be an opportunity to introduce themselves briefly so that they can also present their territory. So let's move to the next slides and let us start with a bit of logistics or technical matters so that you know exactly how you can access the simultaneous interpretation. I'm sure you're all now connected. You've all been able to test uh, the different options and how it works. So all you have to do is uh, click on the tab interpretation at the bottom of your screen so you can select the language according to which you want to follow this final conference. So let us start with the reasons why this project was implemented. We started with uh, this particular situation. Being listed uh, by UNESCO is a great opportunity. We see the number of UNESCO global geoparks, 177 worldwide. When it comes to UNESCO biosphere reserves, a total of about 740 biosphere reserves or sites. And of course, this corresponds to a growing desire for access to nature. This is what citizens today want. And it also allows us to really boost, in a way, um, tourism. It allows us to uh, highlight some exceptional uh, territories with uh, potential while making sure, and this is promoted by UNESCO, we can do all this while promoting sustainable development. We should both highlight and promote exceptional, outstanding natural areas, but at the same time, we should make sure that this geotourism, these touristic activities are sustainable and will not in the long run impair the quality of sites which are listed. And the other question is, what about the commitment, the involvement, engagement of local communities, tourism stakeholders, local communities, whether we're talking about elected members, politicians, residents, inhabitants, economic stakeholders, can, how can I also take ownership of such a label, of such a listing at the benefit of everyone? We can't hear the speaker anymore. Ah, oh, here we go. So. This was just a brief um, contextual uh, element. Now let's move to the USAC project itself, which started in 2021 and that will end in June 2023. What are the three main actions developed all throughout the projects? They are summarized here on this slide. First, there is the development of new UNESCO sites across the channel. And for this, we gather both the stakeholders of the Natural Park of the Cap and Marais d'Opal and our friends from the Ken Downs AONB. And we have launched a project for a cross channel geopark. A second uh, type of action has to do with supporting tourism professionals to discover local heritage. As I was saying, we need to reflect upon the opportunity of a UNESCO listing. It could be an additional asset for tourism, but at the same time, we need to make sure that this tourism is green, sustainable. It has to abide by how we wish to respect its uh, sensitivity and high value. And third, work stream, we need to develop new sustainable tourism experience, which are accessible to all, which are 100% sustainable. Here there's a question of experimentation, innovation, network of stakeholders. We need to try and see how all the stakeholders can work together to develop jointly new opportunities and experience which respond to the new uh, desires of people who regularly visit 
these sites, tourists in general. This is the overview of the different actions that we have at this stage. I won't go any further into details because participants will have an opportunity to present this in a few minutes. So what about the partners involved in this particular adventure? The next slide makes or provides clarification on this. We're talking about an interreg European project, which is a cross-channel one. We have stakeholders on either side of the channel. First, we have, uh, of course, the uh, regional natural park of Armorique, which is the lead applicant in this project, and have two UNESCO sites, one, just, one, one which has been labelled, it was the natural biosphere of the Iroise Sea and its islands, and a project for which the park has applied to be labelled as UNESCO uh, World uh, uh, Geopark, and this is developed, which was developed in the framework of this European project. A second stakeholder, Parc et Marais d'Opal, a regional park uh, in France, in northern France, with uh, an international uh, labeling or listing for the Marais Eau de Marois, the Eau de Marois wetlands. The first stakeholder, the uh, Conservatory of Natural Areas of Eau de France, Northern France. Among the British stakeholders, we have two AONBs, the equivalent uh, of our regional natural parks in France. We have first the Isle of Wight AONB, which coordinates a biosphere reserve on the Isle of Wight, and the AONB of the Kent Downs, which has recently applied in partnership with the uh, Cap and Maridopal Regional Park for a cross-channel UNESCO uh, geopark. So just a few slides uh, now to show you the different territories involved in this uh, project. And now I would like to go around the table and I would like to ask all the different stakeholders to indicate to us, for example, the Isle of Wight, who, uh, of course, uh, attends this final conference. And just in a nutshell, I would like them to let us know about the specificities of their territories. So now I give the floor to the Isle of Wight. Hello, my name is Richard Grogan. I work for the eh bien, Isle of Wight. AOMB, je, and we have been Gorgen, working with the partners pour ce projet et nous avons to, um, participé avec beaucoup d'acteurs. Um, although the AOMB is only half of the Isle of Wight, the whole of the Isle of Wight is a biosphere reserve. Thank you. Let us now start to a participant of a cat dance to indicate who represent their structure, who are the participants, and just a few words on their territory. Uh, hi there, I'm Greg Taylor, so I'm the project officer for uh, the USAP project for the Kent Downs. Um, and yeah, we're involved as one half of hopefully the future UNESCO status cross channel geopart. And our territory, as you can see, Southeast England. Um, the entire area is an AONB based mainly on the chalk downland. Um, and we've been working with the Cap and Merida Pal team for um, about 20 years now. So continuing that partnership through this project. Okay, so we had a little problem. I'm very sorry. Interpretation just uh, failed because, uh, well, anyway, could you please repeat? Yeah, yeah, sure. 
Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm Greg Taylor. I'm project officer for the USAP project for the Kent Downs. Um, as you can see, we're down in the southeast corner of England, um, and the the entire area is designated in an area of outstanding natural beauty, which is a similar status to Park Natural Regionals and also to national parks here in the UK. Um, and the whole designation is based primarily upon chalk downland. Uh, so it's the stretch of chalk that runs through Kent. And yeah, we've been working with the Park Natural Regional to Capa Mare de Pau for at least 20 years now on various projects. Um, and so this is a continuation of that, hopefully with a UNESCO status at the end of it. Wow. Okay, let's move on. The next uh, presentation is by Parc Naturel Régional Cap et Marais d'Opal. Please tell us in a few words what who you are and what you do. Hello, Hélène Duc. I'm going to present this natural and regional park. Maybe you maybe you could hand over to François Charlet, the our manager director. So this in this uh, regional natural park, Cap et Marais d'Opal, we are really in the northern, extreme northern part of France, as you can see here. We have uh, 54 different communities and uh, local authorities located between Calais, Boulogne-sur-Mer and Saint-Omer. Um, uh, it's a regional uh, park and it is um, a territory which has been acknowledged at the uh, national level for the richness and beauty uh, of the um, natural in heritage. It is a very rich territory, but uh, the um, balance is fragile and threatened. And this is why the different uh, communities and departments, etc., have come together to uh, sign a contract, a kind of carta, under which we recap on the different uh, concrete objectives to promote the territory and to organize actions to value uh, our regional park of Parc uh, des Capes et Marais d'Opal. So it is a territorial charter and we have a, a, a mixed organization, private uh, uh, public uh, partnership within which our agents work on different themes, they are in charge of working in 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 uh, coordination with um, uh, all the local authorities for the preservation of the natural heritage, for the uh, uh, energetic um, uh, uh, transition, etc. Thank you very much. Conservatoire d'Espace Naturel des Hauts-de-France is the next one on my list. Could you introduce yourself very quickly? Hello, everybody. Um, I am in charge of the Geological uh, Conservatory for Natural uh, Spaces. Our territory is located in the Hauts-de-France, so it is a bigger region. Uh, then uh, the Parc et Marais d'Opal, and they have asked us to participate in the USAC uh, project, in particular because we are in charge of the uh, action plan for the uh, diversity of Eau de France. And our aim is to support on a scientific basis uh, the uh, uh, creation of a fund with the uh, development uh, development of a cross-channel park with the integ integration of course of our um, uh, AONBs. This has really helped us uh, to coordinate the project and uh, to transform that in a little lab of uh, geo transformation, geo tourism. We sincerely hope that this geopark will um, capitalize on the successes. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask Amélie Caro, president of the Parc d'Armorique, to say a few words about the park and its territory. Amélie, please. Hello. 
Like the Cap and Maredopal Natural Park, in terms of operation, we are in a geographical area that currently includes 44 municipalities. This represents a fairly large area, but less than that of the North Pas de Calais. On our territory, regarding the Geoparc, we are working on neighbouring municipalities which could integrate the new territory of the Parc d'Armorique by 2025. These municipalities are rather rural, with issues of environmental preservation, support for the agricultural installation, the development of tourism, etc., with around 40 different products, projects which are carried out at the level of the Parc d'Armorique, with particular attention on the promotion of the history of culture and the territory, and therefore a very important concern with the Geoparc, which we hope to see completed very soon. We work in partnership, of course, with the municipalities, the communities of municipalities as well, and with the department, the region in broader way, to make the most of our territory. Well, thank you. Thank you now. Uh, of course, I've introduced myself. For those who might have connected themselves a bit later, I'm, uh, uh, of course, uh, the manager of the regional park of Armorique. Uh, Noemi, the project manager, has just given birth to a baby just a few days ago. The baby is called Malo. And his uh, dad, uh, Jeremy, is also absent. Chloe could not, unfortunately, attend today's final conference due to a health issue. So please, uh, uh, I do apologize uh, for their absence. But of course, there were there are main uh, stakeholders in project. And later on, I will be introducing the main outlines of a project for Amoric. Uh, there's. Just something on the chat that says there's no longer any translation. On the chat, it says there's no longer any translation. Hello. Again, my name's Richard and I work for the Isle of Wight AOMB, which is a sort of natural park in the channel between England and um, France. And we've been looking at ways to um, undertake or perform events that can help tourism in our uh, UNESCO site. But the Isle of Wight is wholly a um, UNESCO World Biosphere Reserve. It includes 380 kilometres square of land, which is the island, and a further 535 kilometres square of the sea. So together, the sea makes up more of the biosphere reserve than the land. And we're going to talk today about how we've done some events to help tourism on the Isle of Wight. So your daughter, wants to come to the Isle of Wight. So where, and you would ask, well, why, what would we do there? Well, we're going to show you what you might do. Next slide, please. Can we move the presentation, please? Thank you. So first of all, Branston Bay on the Isle of Wight, we have tried our best to start looking at how we um, get those important biosphere principles to the people of the island. And the first event we did in the summer this year was at Branston, which is a sustainable development using biosphere principles on the island. And here, in an area of um, sustainable development where we built 43 houses, and a biosphere sensor, we invited 
members of the public to come and talk about how what they might find and what they might see and so we had an audience that were able to look at the diversity of wildlife plants and animals that you would find in and around Branston even though it's a housing um, development and you can see here people enjoying both the outside air and the sun and also looking at the different um, specimens that have been found these ones both museum species and also live ones outside we then moved on next slide please to fort victoria so fort victoria is an old fort on the coast and as you can see with the um uh, sea behind the tent we looked at the marine side and concentrated on the marine side of the biosphere so here we had representatives from people doing work on seagrass and on um other marine wildlife in the solent which is the channel between the isle of wight and the mainland of england and this you this landscape you can see is the solent but also we have a marine area in the um, channel in, and we need to talk about that too. So people, members of the public were invited and tourists were invited to come to a free event to talk about the work that's being done to preserve our sea life and our shore life, as well as looking at woodland and um, looking at the birds. So there were guided walks and there was also um, displays and as well as uh, artists doing um, lots of creative work around marine wildlife and the uh, marine environment. Next, please. Next slide. And then the third event we did, which is actually um, part of a much bigger project. So if you remember, we had an, a pandemic just as we were starting our main events for this project. So of course we couldn't do the um, active and invitations to the public that we'd like to have done. So the first hullabaloo we did was a virtual one in the summer of 2020 and people were invited to come online to listen and hear about the arts and sciences of the isle of white biosphere reserve but in 2022 we had a much uh, better atmosphere the um, pandemic had been um, much less influential and we were able to hold a live event on the 15th 16th of october on quite a nice sunny two days we had the hullabaloo event in sandow this was to invite people this is sorry this is on the coast on the southeast coast of the isle of wight on the channel coast and we were able to um, invite people to look at and enjoy the sea the sun the sand and also the spectacular wildlife that you can find in and around that part of the Isle of Wight. So we had displays, we had um, creative activities, we had uh, talks and lectures, and we had um, uh, tents with uh, lots of exhibits and lots of um, uh, information for people about how we were going to how we're looking after the biosphere and how they how people can help look after it too and we were keen to show people all the different ways that this could be done over the three um, events we've described so far um, we had over five thousand people attending we go on to the next slide please
not all of our um, landscapes and spectacular um, sights and sounds are found on the air, or sorry, in the sea or on the land. Some of it is found in the air. And so part of what we were looking to do was to produce and um, explain about the dark skies of the Isle of Wight. There is very little light pollution on the south side of the Isle of Wight, and the Isle of Wight's um, south coast is one of the darkest parts of southern Britain. So we um, set up a dark skies festival in February and invited people to come and look at the dark skies, enjoy the dark skies, look at the um, stars, the planets, but also talk about how these dark skies affect our ecology, our um, uh, way of life, and the way that we can keep the skies dark to help um, things like wildlife and for uh, stargazing. And this has produced a possible new tourism product that we can sell to people to come and see the dark skies of the Isle of Wight. So what we're looking to do is with the Dark Skies Association, we want to try and set up a dark skies park on the south coast of the Isle of Wight in the area of outstanding natural beauty. And we're able to set this um, application up using this event because we've taken the audience feedback from this event and are using it to um, help uh, our application for the Dark Skies site. So these major festivals and events were all part of bringing people to the Isle of Wight and for the people on the Isle of Wight to learn more about the Isle of Wight Biosphere Reserve. Next slide, please. Next slide, oh, thank you. However, this wasn't all that we did. Um, we did a series of program of walks in both the summer and the winter, once the pandemic was um, put into the background, so to speak, we were able to do um, guided walks. So we did two winter programs and a summer program. And over, uh, oh, together with a, an event to celebrate the coast and access to the coast called Crossing the Bar. And these events attracted over one and a half thousand people to walk and get out into the um, a biosphere reserve to learn more about the biosphere whether it was the local heritage the local culture or the um, wildlife it was promoted to both adults and to children and we managed to get those messages across so we want to get across about how lovely the Isle of Wight is to visit how important it is to keep its nature and its um, landscape looking beautiful. And we um, hope that lots of people enjoyed their walk. And as we know, walking in the countryside is very good for both our mental health and our physical health. And that is a big attraction when we're looking at other um, sustainable tourism products to reach different audiences, whether they be, um, uh, whether it's for fun or whether it's for mental and physical health, getting out into the countryside and into the biosphere reserve is an important aspect of what we do. And we also wanted to help our um, youth and our school children. So we created a uh, biosphere project with schools. And the exhibition, which you can see a picture here, was the final event that UCAS was able to um, uh, fund, which was to bring all the schools work together in one exhibition. So six schools and six different artists and six different organizations were all brought together to produce the art that you can see celebrating the um, 
uh, biosphere in all its many different ways using the creative industries. So you can see there are flags, there are pictures, there are costumes, there are photographs, all um, bringing people together. So when we add up the um, events, the walking and the exhibition, over seven and a half thousand people were able to enjoy the different aspects of the um, World Biosphere Reserve through the work and through the UCAS funded projects that we undertook. Thank you. Next slide. So um, before we watch a short video, I'd just like to thank some people. Um, so thank you to Art Ecology, the Common Space, Shade Makers New Carnival Company, Visit Isle of Wight, Learning Wild, Braiding Roman Villa, Enter Exchange, Key Arts, Independent Arts, Creative Outdoors and Sue Bailey. And particularly I'd like to um, employ and Chris Land. So I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. Have a look at what Hullabaloo 2022 looked like and um, any questions I'm glad to answer in a minute, but thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Richard, for this uh, very nice uh, presentation. And now we move on to questions. Uh, and Richard uh, will answer the questions. So you all have the floor. If you have questions concerning the, the events on the island of White, the Isle of Wight. Uh, don't even hesitate to write them down, and we will transmit them later on. If you, if you don't want to ask your question right now, there aren't any questions, so we're going to, we're going to move on. The next presentation is a cross is a presentation that will be introduced by the two main stakeholders the regional natural park of Cap de Marais d'Opal 
and of course the representatives of the AONB Kent Downs. So now over to Greg for his part of the presentation. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm Greg Taylor, I'm project officer for the USAP project for the Kent Downs. And a lot of our work in this project has been done through the lens of the cross-channel geopark. So we've come together with the Parc Naturel Regional de Capimera de Pau and also with the Conservatoire to actually create a cross-channel geopark. So before we went ahead and um, talk about what we've delivered, I just wanted to frame that a bit. So next slide, please. Um, so, as I said, as we said at the start, so we're here in Kent Downs, we're an area of outstanding natural beauty, one of 46 in the UK. Um, and in France, we have the Pardon Natural Originale. And we're very similar organisations, quite similar sizes as well. So, both in around the sort of thousand square kilometre mark, um, with 150 municipalities in France, 140 parishes in England. And we're both protected landscapes, so we're both uh, recognised by the IUCN as Category 4 protected landscapes. And both organisations are really committed to sustainable development and the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So in terms of delivering a joint project, we're really well matched in bringing forward this geopark proposal. And in terms of the timeline of of this all, uh, we hope to be submitting an application to UNESCO in the middle of next year with a about an 18 month turnaround on the decision for that. Uh, next slide, please. And so just very briefly, so geoparks are a UNESCO designation and they're the most sort of, of novel one so you will have heard of World Heritage Sites and maybe also Biosphere Reserves, as Richard talked about. Uh, they've both been around since the 1970s and there's over a, a thousand World Heritage Sites and over 700 Biosphere Reserves. Geoparks are very, very young in comparison. So UNESCO only adopted them in 2015 and there are 177 in the world at the moment with seven in France and seven in the UK, although that's probably going to change in the next few weeks um but yeah very a very new designation and that brings with it much more they're much more geared towards sustainable development um than perhaps a world heritage site is and uh, next slide please so just to quickly outline what what a geopark is so this quote is uh, taken from unesco uh, fundamentally they're sustainable development areas um as a biosphere reserve is as well as other you know, other designations are but the geo element is key so a geopark has internationally significant geology geological heritage that is the basis for the sustainable development and obviously that sustainable development helps to protect that geological significance so you start with the geology and then you're trying to tell a story of everything that happens in that geopark and um, show how everything's connected uh, so the biodiversity that we protect and people are probably more aware of how that relates to the geology but also how our cultural and built heritage is uh, connected to it as well and the main reason why we've chosen this route uh, together is because we have that internationally significant geology. So the scarcity of chalk, um, the, the story of the separation of the two areas um, to create the Dover Strait and lots of other unique features. So we really feel we've got a strong basis for that. Um, and as I mentioned previously, we're already committed to sustainable development goals and to sustainable development. So it's a perfect vehicle to continue all of that work. And just a word on the cross-channel elements. So there are under 10 transnational geoparks in the world, um, and none of those cross a 
a physical boundary. So we would be the first geopark to actually cross a genuine physical boundary um, and have a have an actual marine border crossing through the middle of the park. So it's quite a novel approach, but it's been quite well received. And obviously, as I mentioned, the geological significance that Gail will talk about um, actually resides in the channel. And yes, I think I'll hand over to Ellen now. Thank you, Craig. So the UNESCO Global Geopark is allocated or can be allocated to a natural regional park and association. It can be also allocated to a local community as long as the territory is uh, limited uh, or outline. It's a label which can be renewed every four years and there are three main priorities of work streams. The first work stream or axis has to do with the development of sustainable geotourism. Geotourism, what do we mean by this? It aims at developing activities and products which are geotourism related, sustainable, but with uh, geology as uh, a gateway to this process. We will try to organize exhibition on geology. We'll have some information interpretation panels, specific trails to discover geology. The second pillar has to do with education and awareness. Here the idea is to develop educational activities for the general public of all age, of all category. In our uh, framework, we're going to try and draw the awareness of people to uh, this issue of erosion, coastal erosion. We will insist on the sensitivity, fragility of a geological heritage. And the third pillar, number three, has to do with trying to improve scientific knowledge. For us, and generally building a geopark must be uh, gathering scientists, geologists to stimulate the creation of scientific research in various fields which have to do with the science of the earth so that we can make progress in the knowledge of the earth and its processes. Next slide, please. As Greg has just mentioned, does the label only speaks about geology? The answer is no. The M has to do with telling a story. We're going to try together to spread around and send across the message. Geology may sound scientific. It's quite a sharp and scientific issue. So we would like to make sure that this geology heritage is available to everyone. How are we going to achieve this? We're going to create a link, a bond between the geological heritage and the other types of heritage, explaining to the general public why, why we have uh, chalk-based uh, buildings and construction, because we have a very chalky ground. We will explain why chalk is very specific in biodiversity, because we have a specific flora and fauna, which depends on this. So, in fact, we want to have a look at what's beneath our feet to understand what's beneath our eyes. This is what we're going to try and translate in all the different activities that we will be organizing as well as tourism products that will be suggested thanks to our project. Next slide, please. I'm now going to give a floor to Gael, um, who represents the Natural uh, Area Conservatory of Northern France, and she assists us scientifically in this project. Good afternoon. When we started thinking about the creation of Geopark, the first thing we wanted to focus on has to do with sort of uh, opportunity inventory. Of course, uh, uh, we wanted to take stock of the existing and we wanted to base our development, uh, our candidacy to UNESCO on the basis of this. Something was obvious. Our territories are very similar. Our territories work together and the idea was to work on the basis of a cross-channel geopark. When we started reflecting together upon what would be this cross-channel geopark, its DNA, uh, of course, uh, has to do with the Strait of Dover, the strait that separates us. And this Strait of Dover has become a link, a bond. The Strait of Dover is water, it's a natural border, it's an initiative border 
But if we look at our history, it is a very recent uh, geological object that we share together. And very rapidly, we thought that we had to make sure that the strait would be the link between us, what would unite us, what we were going to promote uh, to UNESCO as our single line, not an obstacle, but uh, just an opportunity, a connection. Thank you. Now, if we go back in time and if we look at this particular uh, mapping extract and if we remove the sea, we can see clearly the continuity of our territories with this huge entity which uh, connects uh, France uh, with uh, Wild. The Strait of Dover in this setting, in this system, is only a page which is 450,000 years old and we have a story of 400 millions of years, and this is going to be our start on point to start unknitting this long common history so we can tell it to visitors, to the general public, to the stakeholders, so that it becomes a territory which is strong and so that we can um, make sure that our population take ownership of it and echo it. Let me give the floor back to Ellen, my colleague from the Natural Park, and I'm going to give the floor also back to Greg. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so yeah, the the landscapes that we're both protected for, as Gail has talked about, are based on a common geological story. And so something that's become clear through this project is that the landscapes that we treasure and have sought to protect on both sides are based upon the same thing. And through site visits and through some of these pictures, you can tell that they really are um, extremely similar, similar areas. So particularly the chalk cliffs and downland, and also what's called the Bocage in France, um, which is the landscapes that we would know um, from the edge of the chalk, looking out towards the Weald in Kent. Um, this is our kind of, this is what we're most at home talking about as an AOMB and as a PNR. Um, next slide, slide, please. And so again, this is this is our our shared biological heritage, which again I would suggest is the area we work most mostly in up to now. So we share a lot of um, similar plant life and wildlife. So. Orchids are a feature on both sides of the channel, and a lot of chalk slopes and chalk grasslands, as well as migratory birds and shared birds. And this is quite an interesting aspect that even as organisations focused on biodiversity and landscape, the channel has kind of been um, slightly ignored up to now. And actually, the Geopark project is helping us to look at the channel as a connection between the two and for wildlife. The movement of wildlife between the two as well so it's even developed the geopark story is developing the work that we already do and next slide please and finally the the shared historical story that we have so the final aspect of heritage that geopark needs to deal with is that cultural and built heritage and this is something that obviously we're well aware of uh, a lot of World War II heritage between the two areas and a lot of that built heritage on both sides of the channel and shared heritage of the Dover Patrol Memorial, as you can see there. Um, but obviously goes much deeper into the styles of the churches that are built in both. So we have a lot of Norman churches in the Kent Downs that obviously are completely uh, affected by the French invasion of England. Um, and so, yeah, the, the, there's a whole wealth of different aspects of heritage that need to be told that we're trying to knit together and actually bring all the partners that deal with these individual aspects of heritage together to tell this whole story of the geopark. And um, next slide.
the link between, as we were saying, the link between our territories is really part of the scope. It would be the first cross-channel geopark, which is connected by the channel, by sea. And it's a great opportunity for us to tell about the opening of the Strait of Dover. It's a great opportunity to talk about the history of the creation, the building of a channel tunnel, which was impacted by geology. We could talk about shipwrecks, shipwrecks which are all alongside the Strait of Dover. And therefore, for this, we are assisted by our partners from the Marine Park. And in the map that I'm going to be showing you now on this particular slide, the two lines that we have drawn between our two territories were not just sketched like this. No, we really, really have a land-based uh, scope. And we also have this marine boundary, which is part and parcel of our geopark project. Here you have a map which is displayed in the conference on your screen. On the land side, we have kept exactly more or less the same boundaries as the ones we have with the AONB and PNR, except uh, with, with the city of Calais, Boulogne-sur-Mer, Camier, Camier, which is right at the southern extremity of a natural park on the coast, Folkestone and Dover in the UK, all those towns will be included in our geopark due to their specific architecture that we wanted to promote and highlight in our application to UNESCO. Next slide. And then I will give the floor to my colleague Gael. In order to promote our territory, the UNESCO is suggesting that we, set, we uh, define geosites, areas which can be either natural, anthropic, uh, buildings, you might talk about limestone hills. It's not the nature of the site which is important, it is the story it has to tell. All the geosites have to mention geology, but above all, they have to mention the link between the earth and human beings, the link between biodiversity and geodiversity. It encompasses architecture, it encompasses the ground issues, the soil. And in the framework of the creation of this geopark, we have reflected in Kent and in our PNR on a list of geosites. On the land side, the list of geosites is almost finalized. These geosites are uh, spread out in the territory. Some are very close scientifically from a geological, biological point of view. Others are different, but they complement sites on both sides of a channel. And the next step, we'll have to define marine geosites. We will have to define specific boundaries or specific areas that we will be able to promote. That's another step. Different uh, sites that will tell a story about the link between our two countries on either side of the strait. And it will talk about the opening of the Strait of Dover, its creation, its history. So we're anxious, really anxious to work on this particular element uh, soon. And we will be presenting you the results as soon as possible. And so this is the, the geopark is the lens, as I said, through uh, which a lot of our activity has been delivered. So in terms of the on the ground activity, working with partners and with the public, we've we've been doing a lot as the geopark. So we had several study visits as part of the project to learn best practice and actually go and visit each other's sites uh, because it's only the Kent Downs that doesn't already have a UNESCO status within the park. So through that, we hosted a study visit each, the PNR and the AOMB on each side of the geopark. Um, and then in the PNR, there's been a whole programme of public engagement events around the geopark. Uh, and there's been vol volunteer work, working particularly on dry stone walls, which are a, a sort of un a unique established feature of the cultural heritage, the built heritage of PNR, but have also been shown to be of uh, in really excellent biodiversity value. So they actually provide habitats for wildlife as well. Um, and Ellen actually joined us for attending a parliamentary reception, um, which was last May, which was hosted by partners of ours, so tourism colleagues that visit, visit Kent, and uh, Euro Tunnel as well, where the geopark was a uh, a key part of the director of the Airbnb speech in a video that we'll show you later was shown. Um, 
other international events that we've been part of. So we've presented the Geopark project uh, to the European Geoparks Network Conference. So as part of being a Geopark and actually gaining the status, you have to engage with the network quite extensively. And so the first phase of that is actually attending a conference and presenting as an aspiring Geopark. And, and participation in these in sort of local events and local engagement and grassroots support is obviously a crucial part of sustainable development, but is also a really important part of gaining the UNESCO status. So as far as possible, a geopark should be grassroots and working with people and actually being delivered by local people. So if we just go to the next slide, please. And the, the, main, um, the main public engagement that we've done as the Kent Downs was based around the Salt Plus Earth Festival that we hosted in September. So the Salt Plus Earth Festival was uh, an arts-led festival that was completely aimed at engaging people with the Geopark project. So it was encouraging people to come and experience the natural environment, get out into the geopark itself, uh, learn more about the heritage of it, and, and obviously engage with artistic works that were, spe uh, were specifically created for, for the festival. Um, and this, it was a good mix. So this was a way of testing new sustainable tourism activities. So not just artworks, but actually doing specific geopark walks and other activities engaging people and we had oh, just shy of 4,000 people attend the festival in all uh, across the weekend and across a series of events that continued after it uh, finished and one particular if we just go to the next slide please uh, one particular aspect of the work uh, the bottom right photo there's a trickster trailer which was two artists created a mobile ecology laboratory and so this the they actually took that on tour to local schools after the festival had uh, finished and engaging school children with their local environment and geopark as well and just next slide please And something that we found uh, throughout this work as the Geo with the Geopark project is that it's engaging partners and this idea of something that's bigger than the AOMB or the PNR and is reaching across the channel has really uh, engaged national and international partners that we maybe previously hadn't worked with or just um, hadn't been able to reach. And as part of the Salt Plus Earth Festival, the National Association of Areas of Outstanding Natural Beauty and the Arts Council England, which is the major arts funding body in the UK, well, in England, um, actually came and signed a memorandum of understanding between them at the festival and at one of our future geosites, Samphire Ho, at the base of the White Cliffs. And it's just a really good example of how we've been able to reach new partners and engage, um, engage these new audiences through the project. I hand back to Ellen. Now, in terms of communication, the European project USAC was a great opportunity for us to launch preliminary actions in terms of communication in relation to our project and its promotion. Because what is very specific for us is the following. UNESCO is, is asking a territory which wishes to become a territory to function as such one year before applying. It means that a year prior to uh, filing in the application, governance must be established, activities and uh, tourism outputs need to be delivered, educational programs need to be launched, and communication must exist one year prior to filing the application to listing. 
Thanks to USAC, we were able to create our logo, which you can see on the top, on the left, a Franco-English uh, logo, Cross Channel Geopark, Transmanche, and we want to be able to associate this logo to the UNESCO Lago soon. We have a graphic charter that we have initiated. And thanks to the European USAC project, we were able to start the design of a joint website. At the time being, it's in progress. We're only designing it, but the objective is to launch it at the end of the day and to make sure that we find on this website some explanations of a geopark, the full list of geosites that people can visit, how you can proceed, how you can visit them, and also we'd like to provide information to the public of different activities, geotourism products which are available and activities available in the geopark. Another piece of information for you last year still uh, linked to the european project lonely planet one of the top uh, leader in the industry of guidebooks has uh, nominated kent the kent heritage course as uh, one of the most beautiful areas of the world so kent was selected by lonely planet and uh, because it is particularly engaged when it comes to sustainable uh, development. So you know where to spend your holidays this summer. Just go to Kent. Which has been awarded by Lonely Planet as a sustainable tourism area. We've also recently launched uh, our information thanks to the website, thanks to social networks. We have a newsletter which is soon will be up and running. It will be an opportunity for us to provide information which are generated thanks to the Geopark. You'll be, of course, informed. Communication tools have been designed and created thanks to the USAC project tools which have allowed us to strengthen our visibility thanks to different local or international events. And also, just now a short video that we would like to show you, which was designed in the framework of the European projects. It's a video which invites you to discover two territories. It's a sort of introduction video of what could the future cross-channel geopark look like in the future. We want to show that our territories are similar. They are identical. They are beautiful photos and pictures which were made thanks to drone technology and we are now going to show you this video. Thank you. The video is about to be launched.
Thanks, Alessandra. There's a fact to follow that video. We're very happy with it. Um, so another sort of comms uh, deliverable that we've been working on and also a way of implementing actually some of the geo geological messaging that we want to implement is that we've worked on a shared cross-channel interpretation strategy uh, that looks to implement UNESCO requirements around the visibility of the geopark and also consider how we can tell the public about ge the geopark and the geological heritage. And this is mostly targeted around the geosites that we looked at earlier. So on the Kent Down side, we've commissioned a consultant to actually produce an interpretation strategy. Um, and that's entailed a lot of working with partners. So all the landowners and site managers of all the geosites actually consulting with them and understanding uh, what what sort of interpretation they want, what sort of interpretation exists already in all these geosites and how we can build a strategy based around that. And in the PNR, they've been working more specifically on an audit of geosites and looking at what exactly already exists at geosites and creating a shared framework for this. So in order to present a unified single geopark, we need to develop shared ways of working and the audit um, framework is one of these. So it's a way of assessing all of our geosites as a single entity. Um, and then they've been looking at how we actually welcome the public to these sites. So where where it is that we actually tell the tell the story of the geopark and where we put interpretation and how we engage the public at these sites. And if go to the next slide, please. And finally, from me, so we've been working a lot on education and outreach um, with particularly local schools and community groups and tourism professionals. So in the PNR, we uh, created an educational back backpack, essentially, that um, teachers and other animators can use to actually engage people and particularly children with the geological heritage of the geopark. So that's available to anyone to actually um, go out and educate people about the geological heritage. And there's also been geological training for tourism professionals in the PNR. So people who are running guided walks and other people who are working out in the landscape, working with the public to actually educate themselves and therefore be able to pass on uh, that geological knowledge to others. And in the Kent Downs, our new geo animator um, is working on outreach and engagement. So she's been working very closely with local schools to actually uh, deliver, deliver assemblies and lessons uh, focused around geology and the geopark and has also organized geosite visits. So you can see their visit to Samphire High, which would be one of our key geosites. And Luella, the geoanimator, has also been working with community groups. So actually work, working, the photo you can see at the bottom there is working with a community group, uh, looking at how they can access geosites uh, with mobility scooters, um, the accessibility of geosites generally. So working with a whole range of partners really to engage the public uh, with, with the whole Geopark project. And next slide, please. In relation to geotourism, this USAC project was a great opportunity for us to launch the first uh, milestones in that direction. On the left hand side, you see a few pictures of our geology exhibition. It's called the Cross Channel Geopark, a journey in time 
for a year, this exhibition will be available at the Maison des Deux Sites at Odingon, close to the uh, Cap Grinet, and then it will, uh, of course, uh, move at the benefit of uh, the different partners. And the objective of this uh, moving exhibition is to tell the story of geological history of our geopark, cross-channel geopark, in a very educational and interactive way, which is simple, user-friendly. For example, we have a cabinet of curiosity, which is chronological, which highlights the different geological periods, which uh, are part of our geological territory. We make a link between local resources as well, and the daily use uh, made of a territory by human beings, such as sandstone or chalk, which is very present. What use have we drawn from these uh, resources in the building sector or in industrial activities? We also find in this exhibition something which is much more audio orientated. You'll be able to listen to the testimonies of locals who live uh, both in France and the UK, were part uh, of this uh, geopark. They tell a story about the experience. You'll have another area and exhibition where you can use tablets uh, with different quizzes and games in relation to geology so that they learn as they play and uh, you'll be able to discover the exhibition in about three weeks time now first in France and then uh, with the different partners we've also worked on interpretation and information panels especially focusing on geological heritage in France um, uh, Geopark, the Geopark in uh, Lonville, one in Longfossé, and the third one on the Mont of Calic, uh, which is called in Vieille-Moutier. Next slide, please. Then, we're very fortunate, we must say this, in our cross-channel Geopark, and especially in France, we have the largest career basin in France, which is the Marquis Career Area query area, it's a great showcase in the open, which really uh, allows us to understand and uh, let people understand the geological formations in the territory. And thanks to the USAC project, we were able to um, provide um, a panorama over uh, this, uh, over the quarries of the Boulogne area. It's a beautiful uh, panorama site. Uh, it has a specific layout. A landscaper was involved, and we've started creating this particular layout, allowing people to derive profit from this beautiful panorama. At the end of the day, the idea is also to have a sort of Belvedere site so that people can benefit from this beautiful view over the quarries and to give information on the geological heritage to the general public at this particular spot. Another project uh, which was developed thanks to USAC has to do with what happens at Lua, at our headquarters. It was a slide just before. Yes. In our headquarters, which is the headquarters of the cross-channel geopark in France, in Lua, we've created a photo gallery, a picture gallery of geosites. We want to strengthen, uh, of course, uh, the uh, service uh, made available by this manor house. We want to provide information to visitors on the geopark. It will be a sort of... Uh, an opportunity for visitors to have information on the different geosites, an opportunity people for people to be guided through geosites as they start their visit. Another project uh, that we have developed, uh, thanks to the Cross Channel Geopark, is the making of what we call the heritage comics in Ardingan. Ardingan is one of the local uh, communities of a geopark on the French side. Ardingan is not very far from the coast. And we resorted to uh, an artist to uh, design uh, this uh, heritage comics. Of course, uh, it's about to be finalized and completed soon. And we follow two protagonists, a grandfather and his uh, granddaughter, all throughout uh, four kilometers. We have identified a particular itinerary 
For this, we worked with the tourist office and the community of communities of Côte d'Opal. And the grandfather is going to be telling to his granddaughter many stories about Ardingan and the heritage sites of the village. For example, the grandfather would talk about uh, coal mining. Uh, there used to be some coal scenes which were developed in the Ardingan in the past. Uh, he will ask uh, the granddaughter to touch the stones of the church, uh, explaining uh, how the church was built, of which type of stone. The granddaughter will be invited to reconnect with nature. The grandfather will explain to his granddaughter why uh, the streets of the village were designed in a specific way, the reasons why they have a particular shape, uh, uh, culture is uh, touched upon, history, and therefore the hikers uh, coming to visit our trails will, of course, uh, be able to follow the adventures of his grandfather and granddaughter all throughout the itinerary, thanks to this uh, access to the comics that they can have digitally access to or through uh, paper copies and they will have access to the landscapes with additional details for example all throughout the trail or itinerary the two protagonists are going to uh, of course follow three uh, uh, little uh, whistles and uh, it will be very nice it's a sort of uh, treasure hunt in a way the idea is to send across messages to bring information on local heritage, information about a village. Children might find it very exciting. They will learn as they play without being aware of it. We would like, why not, uh, to develop this particular expertise uh, in our local communities, villages or towns uh, dealing with other topics. Now, over to Gael from the Natural Area Conservatory. Unfortunately, I cannot reactivate my camera, my video, but now I would like to present to you another project, which was part of a relaunch, uh, uh, financial relaunch scheme in France. It was promoted by Vaudreal and by our CN. We wanted to develop some educational tools so that uh, geodiversity of our territory is as, is as attractive, as simple as possible, is as fun as possible. So for this, we've worked with about 15 volunteers, uh, people from the academic world, some of them are with us today, thank you for this, and also some scientists, and together we have produced different videos uh, on issues connected to the geology of the geopark. When the geopark became cross-channel, those tools uh, needed to be uh, translated into English to be bilingual to serve at best the Geopark project. For the time being, they're only in French, but we want to extend this further. They need to be translated so that we can share the message with visitors. So thanks to the user project, we were able to translate these uh, small videos and we're now going to show you some of them. The opening of the uh, Calais Strait. Over to the video now. L'ouverture euh, du détroit de Douvres. Calais Douvres. Eh bien, voilà à quoi ressemblaient nos côtes par le passé. Voilà à quoi elles ressemblaient. Comme vous voyez, nos deux pays étaient connectés par la terre, par un relief. Mais notre région a subi différentes évolutions. Il y a eu de l'abolition euh, tout au cours du Quaternaire. Il y a 600 000 ans, le niveau de la mer était proche du niveau actuel. Puis, après cette période chaude, il y a eu une période glaciaire. La glace s'est étendue, le niveau de la mer a baissé, et voilà, le niveau de la mer a baissé jusqu'à 120 mètres. Puis, autre période chaude. La calotte glaciaire a fondu, 
Et à nouveau, le niveau de la mer a augmenté. Il y a 500 000 ans, le niveau de la mer était à peu près identique à celui que nous connaissons aujourd'hui. Et puis, le climat s'est refroidi à nouveau. Il y a 450 000 ans, la période était particulièrement froide. Les eaux ont, les eaux ont fondu, les glaces ont fondu. Le climat s'est réchauffé à nouveau, la glace a fondu et un lac s'est formé. La glace a continué de fondre, le niveau de l'eau dans le lac a monté et il a fini donc par submerger l'autre partie du relief. L'Angleterre est devenue une île. Nous étions séparés par un détroit. Le détroit. Douvre était né. Version financée par le programme Interreg et UNESCO. The idea here was to start with what our partners provided us and we wanted to work with the professional illustrate to make sure that this would be accessible that this would really be something which is very close to visitors so that they could benefit from the geopark and this particular version english version of the video really allows us to approach better different uh, target groups when they come to visit the territory we hope that you've enjoyed this uh, fun video explaining geological changes well thank you very much thank you very much to all um, speakers for this presentation greg ellen and Gael, thank you to all of you. Now over to questions, questions you may wish uh, to ask uh, to the project officers and managers this project. We need to really praise the very innovative and daring ambitions of this project. Such uh, a geopark and such a project is really unique. There's a question on the chat. Would Gray, could Gray please, um, Yes. Yeah. Look at this question. <clears throat> and could you please uh, try to answer the question that you have read in the chat? Greg, over to you. Yes. So uh, thanks, Max. Um, we the answer is that hopefully in the next coming in the coming month or two, we will be we've applied to the Heritage Fund for continuation funding for the Geopark project. And within that within the heritage fund application um it's it's actually really geared around engaging as diverse a range of audience as possible from not just the kent downs but the communities surrounding it so that includes london um and the medway towns in terms of other parts of the uk um i don't think we've i don't think we've thought about that too much but we we um we get incredibly high visitor numbers from other areas of the uk and obviously from international as well so the a big part of this is the interpretation strategy that's being created at the moment um and these where we tell these stories the audiences that are visiting particular sites um and as i say hopefully the heritage fund hopefully the heritage fund project will allow us to do much more of that uh, so I hope that answers your question. Um, I'm sure we can be in touch by email, Maxwell, as well. Now, fine, on the chat, there's also a request uh, uh, to get the videos. I'm sure that uh, the speakers will be able to send the videos to people. I have one question. Uh, when it comes to the marine boundary of a geopark. It is this marine boundary which is the subject of uh, quite intense economic activities, whether we talk about fishing, whether we talk about the maritime 
transport activities. How do economic stakeholders, especially the maritime stakeholders, welcome this particular geopark project? Have you discussed with them? And do you have some feedback from them on this marine boundary, which is included in the cross-channel geopark? Um, I'm happy to answer that. So the answer is that we are actually having a meeting in the next week or so, which is bringing together those very partners. So those that are concerned with the marine areas, that's uh, governmental bodies that are responsible for protection, but obviously those working within it, um, I think organisations like the Port of Dover and Eurotunnel as well, as well as our scientific partners to actually look at how we how we value the, the marine section, maybe where the geosites are and how we can actually interpret that. So that's something that the conversations will be ongoing, but we've got a meeting of those partners um, this week. And as I, as we said, it's a completely novel idea in the context of, of geoparts. There are geoparts with marine areas within them, but uh, not not really to be such a central element of the story as this. And I think Francois has something to add. Merci. Thank you, Greg. Now, I just would like to add to what we've just said that we are fortunate to have the Committee of the Straits, uh, which is in this particular scope. And as Ellen has rightly said, the Marine Park as well. With the Marine Park and with the Straits Committee, we make progress in the right direction. We speak about this, we reflect upon it. Of course, uh, the friends for the Kendans have already started the process, especially the Port of Dover, a major stakeholder. We will be moving step by step. First, uh, we will need to develop this uh, approach, this scientific approach, which is particularly important, but then we'll be speaking to different partners in the months to come. And this should lead us, uh, this should result uh, uh, with different exchanges with the Straits Committee. Let us say that we only have very positive uh, eco when it comes to the interest that uh, people may have for uh, the inclusion in the geopark of this marine boundary. That's great. Thank you very much for these clarifications, Francois. Thank you to Greg as well. Now, do you have other questions maybe in relation to the cross-channel geopark, either in the chat or you may wish to ask a question verbally as well. You don't necessarily need to use the chat. Are there somebody who has just raised his or her hand? We can take the question. No. There's a question, obviously, says Nick. Nick, you have a question? Normally, we've just uh, allowed you to speak, so you should be able to ask your question verbally in the conference. Please try and unmute your mic, and you should be able to be to speak and be listened to in the conference. Thank you. Apparently, it doesn't work. So please ask your question through the chat. And then we shall respond to it in just a minute. People are, we have many thank you messages appearing also on the chat. So we thank you for this. Please do not hesitate to uh, make comments on the chat. Of course, we'll be sending your remarks to the project managers and we shall ask them to provide you with a swift uh, response to your questions after this final conference. Let me now continue the presentation. Okay. To I'm, present. I'm now going to tell you a little bit more about what has been done by the PNRA, park of the uh, Natural Regional Park of Armoric, um, uh, aiming at the uh, UNESCO uh, label. 
let's share the screen and so you see this is a picture of one of land, uh, of a landscape of the Mondare. The uh, uh, president of this Armoric Park, Amélie Caro, mentioned that before. The uh, whole site uh, of PNRA is extremely diversified. We have, uh, for the western part, we have cities. We have, uh, sorry, we have islands like uh, Molen and Wissau. We really have a, uh, an important coast. We have the. Uh, uh, the uh, peninsula of Crozon, um, which is extremely typical. Then you have uh, humid zones with the um, with places all along an estuary of the uh, river, which is called Lone Ulne River, and uh, also more. Uh, 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 mountains, well, middle, high, uh, it's less than 400 meters of altitude, those mountains, but they represent the erosion of a chain which is uh, comparable to what happened in the Alps 300 million years ago. It is Herzenian uh, mountain chain. And this is uh, the territory represented by the Geopark. Well, the Geopark is slightly different because you see on this map the overall regional park and then you have the Geopark, except that we do not have the islands of Wissamore and etc. But because they are already part of the uh, Man and Biosphere Program of UNESCO, so they are not integrated. But a few uh, uh, at the northern part of this territory, you can see all along the um, all along the the the, the Brest um, uh, River, we uh, we have included those places, and we have altogether six uh, supplementary uh, um, villages that have been included. The project started two thousand and seventeen. The uh, candidature. Uh, uh, has been uh, lasting for six years now. So first of all, there was an initial project that uh, uh, the, the, the launch, in fact, the official launch, and we're very happy to see that the USAC project um, enabled us to to prolong this uh, uh, candidature for the UNESCO label. As regards 2021, we had uh, uh, an important highlight because we had the visit of the UNESCO uh, examinators, two ladies, one from the Netherlands and one from Germany, who came to visit us. Uh, unfortunately, um, they, they could not come earlier because of the pandemic and they could not come later because of other things. Anyway, um, we um, presented very officially the candidature and they, um, they, they suggested and recommended that the park should um, uh, set up um, a little bit more uh, more actions for the candidature, in particular to make the geopark become a little bit more visible upstream the labelization. Uh, so the objective is to, to hand in a complementary uh, dossier to inform about this uh, added actions in November 2023 with and 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 we hope for um the um the, the we hope to get this label then uh in during the year 24. So an example first um, of what we have decided to go for an interpretation map of this geopark d'Armoric to highlight the geological specificities of this site. Um, there are really some specificities, the attractiveness of the territory, uh, be it for the biodiversity, for the geology, for the uh, um, uh, the heritage of buildings, etc. On this map, you have all the different sites, remarkable sites, let's put it that way, of this geopark and also historical places, uh, really part of the uh, of the heritage and sites of particular uh, interest. The uh, Département of Finistère has a specific project uh, of the uh, parish uh, enclosures and calvaries. These are sculptured um, 
uh, um, calvaries which are remarkable and and it is really carried by the uh, uh, by the uh, Departement de Finistère and they have also handed in this project for the candidature of UNESCO but it, it but they are connected obviously we share the same territory an important work also has been done on the so-called interpretation panels um, because we want to demonstrate and to show what the geological specificities are and explain why it is remarkable, why it is of international interest. And this also helps us to create the link between the geological partic uh, particularities, the diversity and the landscape. So, of course, the aim is to keep it simple because we aim um, of course uh, uh, um, and at the public i mean public at large uh, children young adults adults etc so we have decided to translate also in three languages um it is in english of course because our english uh, speaking friends are important to us but also in Breton which is the local language spoken in Brittany by those who speak Breton not everybody so we have uh, called upon a third party company for the to work on the content we have worked with a geologist specialized in 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 this language and 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 the content for the public we're going to have 12 panels which are going to be produced and we have moved on quite well and they will really cover the whole territory that we uh, talk about on the next slide we have been working on what we call the three houses of this geopark so we have three houses one which is uh, which is the, the the main place at the Menesmer house, which is the place where we uh, inform about the geopark in general, where you can see the landscape, animals, diversity, uh, you um, uh, the domestic fauna, local and and flora. Then we also uh, have a farm, which is part of it. But this content is going to be enriched. We have an exhibit, etc. So we will enrich. Uh, this information, but let's wait for the slides. We have the House of Minerals, which is located in Crozon and um, which presents information on geology of the western part of this territory, of this geopark. Um, this um, House of the uh, Minerals um, uh, is 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 working in cooperation with the uh, geologists and they really help out they help to organize the messages um, um messages um again which are kept as clear and simple as possible school kids um um adults etc but also students uh, from brest and not only brest by the way and then the last uh, one of those uh, three houses is the Museum of the Strawberry and Heritage in Plougastel d'Aula. It is not very far away from Brest. And again, uh, and here again in the uh, coming month and years, of course, we are going to enrich this place by geology. The first one to be ready will be the, uh, the, the House of Menesmeur. Uh, which is located on the uh, village of Lombeck, which is really uh, the one at the center almost of this park. So this is to show you the new scenography that we have imagined in for this house of the Menesmeur. This is an abstract just of a geological map showing on a, on a watch face the equivalent of... Um, well, the whole historical development of our planet Earth. Of course, I'm not going to dwell on that, but you see that uh, at half past six, we still have only marine fauna. <laughs> and so it shows that um, as, as far as the life uh, in the water 
on earth etc uh, well we have to 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 deal here with a very recent history you see but the geological history that's something completely different 500,000 uh, five 500 million years sorry uh, ago it started uh, we have the volcano development, then we have uh, 300 million years ago the creation of the Hertzian mountain chain. As I said, it is almost the same size of the Alps. And for the last 100 million years, a long process of erosion that has transformed this chain into, into something which is uh, Le Mont d'Arrée, as I said before, less than 400 meters high, but still a very remarkable landscape with geological uh, specificities. There is a second place where geology is particularly visible. It is the uh, peninsula of Crozon with um, cliffs uh, all along the, uh, the, the, the sea. Geology is really visible. I mean, it just takes a little piece of information to understand that it is a remarkable site. Um, we uh, have uh, decided to train uh, people, all kinds of people, all kinds of actors, be they part of uh, local authorities, um, tourism, um, uh, guides, uh, agents working on this uh, geopark. Um, those um, training sessions are quite short half a half day or one day sometimes even two days with uh, of course uh, excursions on on the spot so we all we 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 had already uh, the first um, training sessions in 2021 uh, extremely successful the first uh, uh, well the, the sessions organized in 2022 were extremely successful again uh, people are very happy some people come back um actors local actors uh, representing associations etc and we will of course do the same this year the um Geopark project has uh, decided to go for the labeling of the people we call geo ambassadors. They will act as local uh, relay people to present about to present the place, to present what is going on, what is remarkable, etc. And um, this is particularly interesting. This is something that we value a lot. those ambassadors will uh, will will become ambassadors not only at the local level but then also at the level of this whole uh, geopark um, educational kits this is something that we are uh, that we have developed quite quickly uh, this is useful material for teachers trainers to but mainly for kids so uh, school uh, children uh, financed by in, in partly by uh, USAC, we have uh, a lithotech which has been set up to have local stones and rocks that can be observed. We uh, have acquired material, microscopes, for instance, to look at uh, those uh, stones. Twenty to twenty-five microscopes have been purchased in the uh, framework of this project. Uh, in order for children, school children, to look at the specificity of our rocks. And um, at the same time, we also have decided to develop uh, what we call extension tools, um, like uh, comic strips. The deliverables are going to be ready soon. And you can see on the right hand side of this slides already a few pages of, well, one page of this uh, comic strip to explain in a very simple way um what geology is about and our geology in particular is about we all also have an animation film which will be uh, shown 2023 in Menesmer in this house of the uh, geopark we have important um 
uh, important uh, works that have started. We are still very active till the month of April because we want the last deliverables to be uh, handed in on time. And the activity for this year, 23, is particularly intensive. We have, uh, everybody is really strongly uh, uh, implied, but participating we also have our partners on board like the tourist office um, and guides also we had a meeting a few days ago to deliver more information and to keep everybody informed we work very strongly in partnerships with the two other houses the house of the minerals and the house uh, of the uh, strawberry and heritage in plugas del daulas very soon, we will. Well, we 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 will hand in all this, the result of this work, and we sincerely hope to be labelized um, during the year twenty four. Uh, should you have questions, um, feel free to ask, and we will try to answer. I see a very first question in the chat. for as regards the public and the trainings well the the public we aim at for those training sessions are the tourist office the uh, tourist actors whoever they whoever they are uh, hosts um bed and breakfast people guides um um our geo Im Im ambassadors um but also economic actors we have not decided to open up to the public in general um but we will think about it later on maybe some teachers could be interested in that i mean that would be an idea we also have uh, craftsmen and women uh, who have already been trained um some people really uh, uh well part, part, some people working on potteries you know uh or on on how to recycle plastic material um artists in general because they may be and get inspired by geology so they are accepted within the training sessions do you have more questions of course you, you you can just raise a hand and we will we will you open your mic and you can raise the question if you wish so but you can also write it down but i i can't see any any questions so far Which means that I move on to the conclusion. What we can say is that the 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 different websites of the different actors uh, uh, function as a relay uh, for the uh, European USAC project. And I also inform about a digital platform which is present on our Geopark Armoric site, and that helps to deliver um, uh, recommendations for those structures who would um, who would start who would like to start a project like um, a geopark or uh, to candidate for the uh, unesco label this platform may be fed by the uh, deliverables of our different uh, usac partners uh, so I have already called for uh, participation from our different partners and um, our speaker is lost. No, no, here comes again. So you, you, you could, for instance, deliver your conclusions or your different reports, and this will really feed the platform to work on the uh, um, on the possibility to replicate and to transfer this work which is being done 
uh, a work which is precious, not only for us, but maybe for other people. Uh, Francois has asked for the floor, so I'm handing over to Francois. Thank you very much, Jean-Francois. Yeah, I just, I, I would like to insist or to relay on what you said. It is always a little bit delicate, if not frustrating, to sum up uh, so many months of, of, of common work, uh, despite the fact that we make presentations which are uh, brilliant and, and particularly rich, uh, but you're right to stress uh, and point out how important this database is, is and that all the partners should use it. It's going to be uh, an important part of this work beyond this um, webinar that we are having right now. So you are really kindly invited to look at this material um, that has been uh, developed thanks to this Interreg uh, project. And I also would like to say that this uh, Franco-British or British-Franco link is particularly uh, important. I attended uh, the restitution seminar of another Interreg project based on nature uh, and all the uh, uh, and all our uh, 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 British partners expressed the fact that they that that they were frustrated because uh, well they they want to go on working together and that Cape Marais d'Opale uh, all our elected uh, representatives politicians partners and in Kent all the people are so. Um, well, so happy about this link, which is not just a link between two coasts uh, with a channel in the middle. Uh, so I would like to thank again all those who participated in this project. Thank you very much, Francois. On my side, I would like to thank all the uh, participants. I think the... Um, uh, unfortunately, I could not participate per participate personally in all the meetings. I kept myself informed, thanks to Chloe, Noemi, Alessandre, Jeremy. They they all told me about what was going on. I also looked, of course, uh, uh, at uh, the uh, deliverables. Um, again, the uh, collective participation and attitude was extremely good. Uh, everybody uh, behaved very constructive. It, we had fluent exchanges. We um, this this was really a pleasure so far. And as the project lead, I really would like to thank from the bottom of my heart all the participants and all our partners uh, for their efficiency, for the quality of the production. Uh, we 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 saw that today, and there are many other things that you haven't seen right now and so far, which are extremely qualitative. So, so it is a it is a collective thank you for all this and what is to come. Amelie, maybe do do you want to say a few words of conclusion? Yes, I could. Um, I listened to all the uh, return of experience, and like Jean Francois, I joined in right in the middle. So I really would like to congratulate all those who worked before I joined, and um, and and all the visual material is really extraordinary. I'm very happy with that, and I also agree with Jean Francois as regards the good uh cooperation that we had and the fluid link between all the teams and the partners which is really positive and it's always very nice to be able to say that it works very well that the connection between the territory is positive because we all want to value what we have and uh, when everything matches <laughs> it's wonderful and um it and it, it, it becomes uh, a vector for success. So I wish you to get the label, of course. 
uh, it also reflects upon the values that we have within our parks, culture, heritage, projects for young people. We mentioned young people. This makes sense, you see, for them. To, we, we, we want them to take over, to, to act as relays later on, to talk about it in their families, that tourists talk about it. So congratulations, and I wish you all the best uh, for the uh, remaining uh, uh, journey. We haven't mentioned so much the technical and administrative uh, part behind that. Thank you very much, Alessandre and, and the teams. Um, because uh, it's it's very important to have this backup. We also have the uh, accounting uh, office, which has done an enormous effort um, working on the grants, etc. So thank you very much. And we appreciated all those ideas also about the platform that we will share. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amelie. And indeed, uh, we would like to thank all the organizers for their efforts. And the organizers of the meeting also. We have a few technical problems, but despite that, we, we, we could say what we had to say. So again, thanks to all. We hope to see you soon again. And well, have, we, we, we hope to conclude in a nice way this journey. Thanks to you all. See you soon again or e-meet you soon again.